Operation Confidence proudly presents America's Invisible Heroes radio talk show. Tune in weekly on Sundays from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Pacific time with your host, Consuela Mackey, co-host, U.S. Air Force veteran, Matt Davidson, announcer, Taylor Marcella, U.S. Army veteran and Strategies for Hope segment host, Dr. Kathy Cash, U.S. Army Reserve veteran and entertainment segment host, Charles Whitehead, U.S. Army Special Forces veteran, and I once was whole segment host, Richard Cook, U.S. Army veteran and lifeline for women's veterans segment host, Martha, Elena, Varela, National Faith Director, Chaplain, and Veterans and Recovery segment host, Anthony, Akinpora, and U.S. Air Force veteran and incarcerated to success segment host, Kevin, Lewandowski. For more information or to be a guest on our show, email info at operationconfidence.org. Operation Confidence is a grassroots nonprofit. The organization's mission is to provide stable housing for veterans who have experienced homelessness, as well as providing a wide range of supportive services. To help accomplish our goal, a successful landowner has donated land for the project, a world-renowned architect has offered to design the houses, and construction classes from the local community colleges will take part in building the houses. Your support and donations are needed. To get involved, please visit our website at www.operationconfidence.org or email info at operationconfidence.com. Okay, so welcome everyone, and thank you for tuning in to America's Invisible Heroes, show dedicated to our veterans and their families. Yes, I'm your host, Consuela Mackey, Executive Director of the Grassroots Nonprofit Organization called Operation Confidence. No, I'm not a veteran, but my heart goes out to our American heroes, especially those with disability and experienced homelessness. For those who are new to the show, America's Invisible Heroes were established to provide a platform for our veterans to be able to share their heartfelt stories, resources, challenges, and accomplishments. Now, allow me to introduce you to our co hosts We have U.S. Army Reserve veteran Charles Whitehead, who's also a board member. We have Taylor Marcella. She's an announcer and also a board, um, and a board member. U.S. Army veteran Martha Varela, she has a bi-monthly segment called Lifeline for Women Veterans. Then we have Anne Monique. Anne has a bi-monthly segment called The Roses Movement. With them, there's Lauren Hammond. She has a monthly segment, Creative Charities, Option Nation, one of Operation Confidence's uh, sponsors, which we're so thrilled to have. And then we have U.S. Army veteran, Dr. Wendy Children's Children's. She has a bi-monthly segment called Living Life Completely. And there's Darcy Dijon. She has a monthly segment called Making Music LA. And last but not least, we have U.S. Army veteran, Richard Cook. He has a bi-monthly segment called I Once Was Old. Can you wave to everyone so they'll know who you are? Hello. Also, uh, I want everyone to take a second to uh, and ask Dr. Uh, uh, Children, would she please say a prayer for the victims of 9-11 as well as for the Queen? You muted, Doc. I'm muted and just as a going, huh? Yeah. All righty, here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, we thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up and keeping us safe, Lord, because we know you did not have to. Father, we lift up all families that were affected with not affected by and impacted by 9-11. Though time has passed, we know that wounds are slow to heal, especially when we lose our loved ones, our sons and daughters and mothers and fathers, Lord. Lord, we lift up also uh, Queen Elizabeth and her family as they navigate the loss of their mother and grandmother and uh, <clears throat> queen. Father, we I would be remiss if I did not lift up all of those veterans and those nationwide and worldwide 
who suffer from mental health issues, Lord, as we are in the, the month that we are aware and acknowledge suicide. Father, I just ask that you will keep those that are contemplating and, and give them the support system that they need to make it through this day and every day forward. Lord, we just believe in you and thank you for everything in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> My voice went. Take it away, Charles. Charles has something to say here. Oh, well, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, first things first. Uh, Carney has connected us with some uh, radio show. Um, so I'm going to talk about that, but I'm going to tell you, today is 9-11 and, uh, you know, 9-11 was a uh, time and, uh, you know, it was, I always remember that day, you know, what happened. So we want to take a, a brief moment to just acknowledge that that happened and that, uh, you know, we continue to heal as a nation, as a world. And uh, thank you for that prayer, Dr. Childress. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so the other thing is the, we have the radio show and we're going to be uh, part of it, so we're going to have to like um, uh, make our segments uh, pretty much streamlined, you know, you talk about your points and all, because we don't want to, I don't know if uh, uh, kind of got a chance to speak to everyone on it, but, uh, you know, I'll let you know when it's time to wrap up. Uh, I've been, uh, I'm going to be Barney Fife, the, the, the <laughs> time police now, you know. Yeah, so. he's the time police, okay. Yeah, so if and, and, and if any of you want to make sure that you're on the radio show, then you just have to keep uh, your segment to the script so that we can wind it up in an hour because the show is only an hour. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to now Charles. Charles, you have a video to show. Yes, uh, so give me a second here. I'm going to, uh, yesterday, you know, you know, the whole Operation Thing Conference is about uh, building the tiny homes. Well, Richard, I'm sure you may know about this. And uh, yeah, he knows. There was a fire at the West LA Tiny Homes the other day. I heard it on the news and then, uh, you know, this was what, uh, two days ago. And yes. so, uh, 15 tiny homes burned down. I guess I don't know if that number changed since then, but so I have a video. I'm going to show you a little bit of it. It just, you know, and it's kind of, you know, this is what, uh, unfortunately, what we be talking about all the time here, you know, things like uh, this. Now, let me make sure I can get the right stuff going here. I got to... Okay, let's go here. Boom. All right, let me see. it's uh you know it's a it's a it's a shame but it happens unfortunately so here we go mm. the fire department had no water that's why everything burned they had no water the fire department you guys can hear that right yeah, yeah. and see it okay can because you? because there's no fire hydrant well, Dolores Ramos, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, and I live here and I've lived here for six months, pretty much six months I heal. <laughs> Nothing it's gonna be. Let's talk about last night. Huh. What happened? 1130. What happened? Uh, the female that lived. You can't see it now? No, yeah, what is the the commentator in the background what i don't understand oh no, that's the that's the video they have the fire there and then her you know you, you can't i mean do you still see it yeah we yeah. see the little houses but the video is not it's for i stopped it now but i mean you, you okay can't, go ahead. no that's the video that's the video two rolls behind me she was yelling and screaming fire it was just devastating man it was fire with somebody really could have got parked a lot that's how they got us coming out here. And then when I called, the, I had to call the Red Cross. I called the crisis hotline just to get somebody out here to try to find the place, the best place best to live. And then, you know, we serve for this country, man. We sign up to put our lives on the line for this country. And this is why they treat us. They don't care, man. We out there devastated, man. We're homeless. We help us. We're trying to get our lives together. And this is how they feel about us. We don't care about us. You know, we do everything we can. We, we follow the rules. 
we talk to these people, we ask for help, but they ain't trying to help us do anything. And I don't understand what we got to do, man. You know, we try to do the right thing, go you know, through the process, but there's nobody here to care about us. And we don't have uh, so there was actually a, a gentleman that was, that his uh, photograph showed on video, not just the houses. Yeah. Yeah. His commentation you can hear, not just this. I think the video froze, Charles. Oh, okay. So we can hear, we can hear, but we can't see the pictures moving. Oh, anymore. okay. So, so this is the problem with this computer for whatever reason. When I okay, so if I show it, there, you there go. we go full screen, then then it doesn't. Uh, okay, so that's so that, six months I here. Okay, so I'm just, <laughs> nothing like I thought it was gonna be. Let's talk about last night. Now you guys can see that, yeah. right? There you go. Yeah. Eleven thirty. Okay. Um, the female that lived two rows behind me. You'll see She's it. She's yelling and yeah. screaming fire. Okay. It was just devastating, man. It was horrible. Somebody really could have got burnt alive. And that's how they got us living out here. And then when I called, I had to call the Red Cross. I called the crisis hotline just to get somebody out here to try to find a place for the displaced veterans to live. And then, and, you know, we serve for this country, man. We sign up, put our lives on the line for this country. And then, this is why they treat us. They don't care, man. We out here devastated, man. We homeless. We help us. We're trying to get our lives together. And this is how they feel about us. They really don't care about us. You know, we do everything we can. We, we, we follow the rules. We talk to these people. We ask for help. And they ain't trying to help us do anything. And I don't understand what we got to do, man. You know, we try to do the right thing, go you know, through the process. But there's nobody here to care about us. And we don't have any answers. We're trying to figure out what we need to do. I mean, the fire, you should have seen it. I got videos of the fire. The fire, it was a blaze. The blaze was so bad, man. It looked like, you know, looked like something like uh, some of them fires that be happening out there, you know, the wildflowers and stuff. I mean, the blazes was high, man. I mean, this whole place could have burned down. And then what's crazy about it, they got people here that's orders, people that's mentally ill that need help, people that's on drugs. They got people selling drugs up in here. You know what I'm saying? The staff, we, we tell them and complain about it, and they're not doing anything about it. Explosion occurred right over here in this uh, uh, second row from the front. And um, places got, it was so it was so devastating that there was nobody here. There's no uh, fire hydrants nowhere. And when the fire department got here, when they finally got here, they didn't have uh, water to put the place out. They had to use foam. And then all of these security guards, they were using a uh, fire steamer just to put the place out. And then because of all this, all this garbage and that they allow people to have, all this uh, trash and stuff, if it just been that one unit, all these other units wouldn't have been burnt down. But they allow all these vessels to have all this trash. It looked like a fucking junkyard up in there, the way they got us living. In the way they treat us, man. They feed us the same type of food every day. They got us living in these places. And we don't really have no uh, facilities to really take baths or use the bathroom or nothing. It's devastating how they treat us, man. And I was here and it was bad. I mean, this place was just horrible. I mean, people could have got killed. I'm knocking and kicking on doors, trying to wake people up. And there's no kind of way we had no keys to get in. And it was just devastating, man. It was horrible. Somebody really could have got burnt alive. And okay, that's, that's enough. Horrible. So it it, it actually gives it gives us some insight, right, as, as we're moving in the direction of, of getting the tiny homes project up and off the ground, you know, we hear some very frightening things. Um, you know, staff are not equipped to deal with the, the mental illness. Like we heard Dr. Childress point out that, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, is, is kind of a reality in the lives of many of our veterans, as well as, as the substance abuse, you know, you, the, the man says they're selling drugs <laughs> right out of the tiny homes. So if you yeah. don't have the infrastructure to really support the needs of this these veterans, this is exactly what we heard this man say. There's no it's, fire hydrants. It's the most horrible thing ever. You know, I mean, no I mean, fire hydrants. I mean, is it, it looked like a fire a fire code violation when I looked at the map. They're too mm -hmm. close together. They're too. So it's really unfortunate that that these you know, and and I hate to throw the VA under the bus or whoever else is involved in the tiny home project. Isn't that that other group? That uh, Consuela down there that's involved in that new horizons, new uh, new, new direction, new, new directions. Direction. Mm -hmm. Um, so it just it just gives us some insight as we look to move forward with our project. The things that we have to to have, you know, yeah. um, staff that care, fire hydrants, 
you know, fire extinguishers programs. You're talking, you're talking about our key house project that's yeah. coming, coming together. No, yeah. these are some of the things that we just will not have right. happen to our veterans. And it's so sad. Oh my God. I mean, well, it's just I'll hard. make a like, comment. No water, I, no nothing. Many of you know I used to work there, but as I advocate, there's a lot of stuff that the VA is not doing. A lot of stuff. I know that. Yeah, and we hear it all the time, yeah. you know. But this was just horrible, just absolutely yeah. horrible for those people to be on it. And then what now where do they go? You know, and I mean, then West LA, the grounds were beautiful. I mean, I can't even understand why they would allow uh, a teeny home project uh camp, I mean, to be out out there no one's cleaning it and no one they can't go to the bathroom there's no it's, it's i never knew this was even going on it's horrible right so you know god bless our best but this in, is why we have these in, shows in, in that respect the long beach va is much much more cleaner yeah well that's charles can tell you about that and so can yeah. uh so can Martha Long Beach yeah. VA. It's much yeah, better. I was at the Blind Rehab Center right there in Long Beach VA. So I that's why I experienced it much better than West LA. Mm -hmm. Okay, well moving right along here. Uh, um, we got Ann. Come on, Ann. Hello, Mama, my dear. Tell us about you, girlfriend. Remember, we trying to we got Barney Fives on board. <laughs> I know. We already uh, 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 <laughs> five minutes over. <laughs> so Charles, why don't you start showing pictures and I'll um I'll describe what's happening when you show the pictures, okay? I am. I'm literally like uh you know Okay, let me just get now. started and you pull them in as you can. In um something like 2015, we started ringing bells for Rosie's. Um, Rosie the Riveters, the woman who worked on the home front in World War II, the youngest we know is 94 now, and we're asking all of America to find these women and honor them while we can, and most important, to go do something that gets you involved and uh, essentially gets you knowledgeable about the incredible personalities and feats of these ladies. Um, the first photo that came in on Labor Day was uh, from uh, Consuela. And then you can show that here in a minute. The oh, second yeah, one that came in almost there. came from Europe. And it came from a museum uh, called the Freedom Museum, which essentially is on the border of Germany and the Netherlands. It's in the Netherlands. and. Um, they have been just wonderful over many years now to take part in not only this project, but other projects. Um, then the rest of you, several of you rang bells and they were really fun. There was a, a woman um, in LA who will be 100 on the 13th. And um, she actually, we interviewed her for your program but yeah, there was a technical problem, so we need to interview her again. Her name is Ethel Margolin. Um, do you have the photos here? Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm pulling them up. You know, there's a okay. There's a mix between photos and videos, and and the only address I have so far is for Taylor, and I've got uh, signed uh, pictures by a living Rosie. So you'll have a signature of those who rang the bell. So I'll get to your addresses. Or maybe, do you want me to send these uh, photos just in a packet to you, um, Consuela? Or do you want me to wait till you send uh, them? I, yeah. Well, let's wait till who, who requests them, though, because as I share with you, my house is in an uproar right now, and okay. I don't want them to get damaged. All right. Well, mm -hmm. uh, if anybody wants a... Um, Signed copy mm -hmm. of a Rosie ringing a bell. Let me know. There, there you go. Beautiful. <laughs> Look at Taylor. Ring a bell for Rosie. 
We had about 10 from our, our group. Yeah, they're all kind of, you know. No, son. my son couldn't stop ringing the bell. That was a great <laughs> choice of a bell. He does. <laughs> so. <laughs> so what we're going to do, instead of limiting it to Labor Day from here on out, uh, every time we complete a project, we're going to be ringing bells. So, okay. Um, it's not one of them, of course. You have to forgive me. I'm uh, kind of, you know, I'm scattered a little here. You know, I'm working with an old machine. Another thing while he's doing that is, um, we Charles, we'll have to talk about that. Maybe we, we now have a grant to yeah. name schools across the country. Uh, Rosie the Riveter, uh, Rosie the Riveter Room, and we, um, I'm working on that today, and we'll go into a rural area where they're going to be naming two rooms and two different schools. And we'll have a lot of video and we'll try to start a national movement to get departments of education and different schools, they can be private schools or whatever, to name a room. It doesn't have to be a classroom. It can be a library or um, even a cafeteria. Or I'm ringing the bell for Rosie. Boom. <laughs> Now she will be 100 day after tomorrow, or uh, okay. let's see, I think it's Wednesday. You have some other videos. Uh, I, got some it. Other I do, you know, it's, you know, you see the problems I have when I'm dealing with the, you know. Well, I know your time is precious, so why don't we hold them? And if you have time at the end, you can pull them up, Charles, okay? Yeah, he is anyway, pull I want to thank everybody that was involved in that and I definitely want to get a signed copy from our, our group. I ha yeah, I have them, you know, but when I, you know, as you see, when I try to do certain things, it's, uh, you know, sorry. That's okay. You'll get your, your, your other one back. Yeah, you know, the Ferrari's in the shop. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Martha, some of you, girlfriend. Okay, I wanted to talk just a little bit today about a really exciting collaboration that I have in the works. And I wanted to make sure that we had some of our powerhouse women veterans in the group today. So Dr. Wendy Childress, um, I'm sharing this information <clears throat> for you because I think that when we think about women veterans and sort of this peer-to-peer vet-to-vet network or model, I should say, program model <clears throat> that has found to be the most effective it's really because we are um, understanding of one another and it's, you know, other supportive veteran advocates like Consuela and other folks that are, are on the call that really make it work. And it's unfortunate we saw, um, you know, a video about what it looks like when it doesn't work. Um, you know, it's up in flames. And that's sort of what my experience has been kind of working with the veteran community is that, you know, I saw the gap right away, you know, that you have people who just really don't seem to care and don't have the compassion or maybe even the level of understanding not having um, served themselves. So when we do come across, you know, some superstar all-star programs or resources, and, and again, we, we hear this theme of mental health is really being, um, you know, one that's really important and we need to focus on, you know, it's always been kind of bothersome for me to hear folks say, you know, well, it's all about suicide prevention and 22 veterans uh, commit suicide every day, but what does that mean? Like, what is the actual action that your group is putting in place to deal with a veteran before they contemplate committing suicide? You know, for one, it's not going to happen conveniently between the hours of nine and five when you're at work or when you're getting paid. So are you taking phone calls from veterans on Fridays at 4.30? 5.30, 6.30 before they're getting ready to get thrown out. And again, I'm not, you know, uh, the all-star in, in, in this um, effort by any means, but it's like really difficult for me to understand how it's so difficult for others. And, you know, again, picking up the phone, answering a call, you know, I still take phone calls from some of the women veterans that I met in my prior job with the, um, the National Veterans Foundation. You know, I'm, I'm just disappointed. I'm frustrated. I'm, you know, I need someone to talk to. That's the action <laughs> that we have to take. And so I stumbled across a really awesome foundation called the Bar Barbara Giordano Foundation. And the Barbara Giordano Foundation is actually located in New York City. 
um, which was interesting because we're in California, but it, they were very unique in that they only focus on women veterans, which is unheard of. Um, you know, a lot of times it's the opposite. They don't fo focus on women veterans. So, um, you know, in an effort to really kind of come up with these concrete events and activities and, and you know, um, preventative measures to help deal with this, the, the really difficult um, issues, like we heard the gentleman say, you know, and it's, it's, they're the same ones. So it's no secret, you know, the mental health issues, the substance abuse issues, you know, having qualified staff who care to help address the mental health issues before it becomes a crisis. So a little bit about Barbara Giordano. She's actually um, uh, deceased, rest in peace to Miss Barbara Giordano. So her sister, Virginia, actually runs the Small Family Foundation in New York City. And <clears throat> they honored their sister, Barbara, because she was um, in the helping profession. She was a nurse and just really was on the cutting edge of trying to incorporate some of these non-traditional um, healing mechanisms and healing methods, right? So unfortunately for a lot of our veterans that do suffer from mental health issues, you know, substance abuse goes hand in hand because they're not getting um, the appropriate mental health care that they need. So they supplement um, in a negative way, of course, with substances that they get off the street, you know, and not all veterans are, um, you know, really interested in taking medication as the only form of healing. So anytime we can incorporate some of these non-traditional healing methods, um, and again, they're free, um, it's, it's amazing. So a couple of them are coming up um, this month, and I really want to spread the word so that we as a network um, can share with women veterans, because again, women veterans are off, oftentimes the most uh, you know, neglected, if you will, of the, the subgroups of veterans. Um, so if I can share my screen. Did we make you a co-host? Yep, you did. Let's see if I can okay. share it. Okay, so I know it's a little jumbled, but just forgive me here. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm like Charles, I'm trying to. Okay, so <clears throat> can you guys see this okay? Mm -hmm. So on Tuesday, September 27th, there is a uh, one of their, and it's all free and it's on Zoom. So the only thing you have to remember is that they're on the East Coast. So we're three hours ahead or three hours behind. Um, but one of the other, um, one of the new, well, not new, but kind of the concepts that they're promoting is this, the, the, uh, the impact that animals have with healing, right? So we've seen that a lot of our veterans have not necessarily just the service animal, but the emotional support pet. So it could be your cat, it could be your dog, it could be your bird, it could be, you know, uh, a gerbil or a hamster, whatever that you, you know, find some sort of, um, you know, support when you're feeling down or, and animals are very in tune with the way that we feel emotionally. I have a support cat myself. I didn't know she was going to be a support cat, but she has really filled that role. And it just amazes me how in tune she is. And as you can see, kind of the intuitiveness that the animals have towards um, us as people. So this is kind of a sample. It's coming up Tuesday, September 27th from seven to eight Eastern time. And it's free. You just go on to the GiordanoFoundation.org website, click under uh, upcoming events, or you can call the number there um, to get uh, registered. So, and the flyers are also on there. So you can, um, can also share those with your network. So another one that's coming up is the equine therapy. And again, the horses have been, research is showing that the horses have been extremely vital in therapy and helping um, both men and women. But in this case, this is kind of what the, the um, focus is for the Giordano Foundation. So another free uh, webinar from, for uh, women. This one is gonna start September 28th, but goes through November. They're asking if you could attend all five sessions, so, you know, again, to get the full um, healing kind of out of this, this uh, therapy session. They're requesting that, you know, if you can um, attend all five sessions. And, you know, this is sort of like the first step for us to sort of partner with this organization, help them spread the word, help them get more women veterans in attendance. So again, it's open to all women vets, although I do wear two hats, you know, um, I'm very gracious to have uh, accepted the position with PVA through this network from Operation Confidence. So I will always 
continue to support the grassroots efforts of, and, and networking that Operation Confidence provides, because that's also um, the key in, in, in some of this healing is the network of people that you have kind of in your support circle. So this is another one, um, a really exciting one, and <clears throat> we're sharing with our group. And then this one, I know I am extremely excited about, um, I'll move it here, is the sound therapy. So there's been a lot of recent, and it's not new when I say recent, just meaning kind of more of sharing of the information has been recent because the Buddhists have actually incorporated the sound from the bowls into their uh, therapy and into their meditation. So as you can kind of see the pictures there, you know, it's a whole therapy. And again, it's the alternatives to medication. It's the alternatives to, uh, you know, feeling like it's, you got to sit in front of a, uh, a therapist and talk. There's alternatives um, to healing and community healing that, you know, can help address some of the issues related to PTSD, uh, you know, sleep disorders that result from the traumatic stress, depression, anxiety. Um, you know, so this is another one that they offer the sound therapy. And I know I'm going to ex be excited to sign up for all, all the, the sessions because I've started also um, attending some of the sessions. There's a Qigong session that started last Thursday. I don't have the flyer. Oh, actually. Um, so that's another one. And then I'll show you their website because there was a couple more really cool ones. So once you go on the Giordano website, you click on uh, about us um, and then it'll show you kind of some of the other ones. So the vision mapping is coming up September 22nd and that's kind of more in the arts uh, kind of category. But we, as we all know, arts is very healing and we've got Dorsey on here who who is the, the art expert that can definitely um, you know agree with that. But the vision mapping, kind of like the vision board where you kind of start using you know, the, the, uh, the art therapy to address some of that, um, you know, the healing. And we, I showed you the flyer for the animals in our partners and then the equine therapy. And then here's the Qigong. So the qi, Qigong, I'm sorry. So the Qigong is kind of a connect, kind of a combination of, um, the, it's sort of like the Tai Chi and yoga kind of connected together. So it's, it's a different uh, modality. But one of the goals of the Barbara Giordano Foundation is to provide um, some of the other healing mechanisms that we don't see, right? We see yoga, there's tons of meditation sessions out there, but they wanted to offer different ones. So this was very exciting. Um, I met with, oh, here's another one, emotional freedom techniques. Um, and I think sometimes I think they refer to this as tapping. So just, you know, really exciting, you know, breathing, um, how to incorporate, you know, uh, breathing techniques and the restorative power that your breathing has. Um, and that also is incorporated into the, the Qigong. So it's like a, um, really focusing on the breathing. And it was actually hard. I, and it was, we did the session um, with the, the, a couple of the women at PVA just to try to try it out to see if it would be appropriate for the women in the wheelchairs. And they were able to do the sitting version of the Qigong. So I was actually sitting because many of you know, I'm kind of dealing with some health issues of my own. And I've got some sciatica and lower back resulting from an injury that I had when I was in basic training that's resurfacing 30 years later. So even for me, it was like challenging in the chair. It was very, but very good. The breathing um, was very powerful. So we're going to. This is very, very informative. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a dog and a horse lover anyway. So I wish it was some kind of way we could take part in that other than on Zoom. But I do. Well, that's that's what they space. have. Yeah, that's what they have offered now. So, you know, we can take advantage of, of it for free because sometimes these these um, healing modalities are not free. And if you mm -hmm. look on other websites, I've seen like a network of community healers. They charge anywhere from like $150, $200 an hour to provide yeah, we got some to of get, these services. We got so, to get the word out. Yep, yeah, we'll get the word hate, out. And I hate can, to you rush know, by you. Yeah, no, no, I'll wrap it up. Um, so, and, and this is why I wanted to do this first is that in, incorporate this, this um, information. And then later we can bring on Virginia Giordano to the show and she can meet some of our 
powerhouse women vets and talk about kind of next steps for partnership with their foundation. Thank you. That's You're great. Welcome. Great information. Okay, so we have to hurry up and move on. I don't want anyone to feel rushed either. Uh, Darcy, it's on you, girl. You muted. You muted, Darcy. She's like, oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dorsa Dujan with Make Music LA. And today we're not going to talk about music, but I would like to introduce you to an incredible woman who is part of an amazing battalion of women. Major Fanny McClendon was part of the historic 6888 Battalion to serve during World War II. President Joe Biden signed legislation to award the Congressional Gold Medal to the members of the World War II 6888 Central Postal Directory Battalion, known as the 6888, on March 14th of this year. The 6888 was sent overseas in 1945 because of a growing pressure from African American organizations to include Black women in what was called the Women's Army Corps. The advocates insisted that Black women be allowed to join their white counterparts overseas. So we're going to show you a little video. Uh, let me share a screen. Whoops. What are we? Uh oh. One second. Uh, here we go. Can you see my screen mm -hmm. or no? Yeah, we see. see my screen. Yes, yeah. just... the black screen, but we see it. Okay. Uh, well, that's not what we want. Uh oh. No. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> I'm looking, looking for it. The thing what that I see happened? it's going around in circles, so it's loading up. Oh, is it loading? Yeah. Okay. It might take a while based on how your speed is. Yeah, that's a, I think it's contagious. What Charles has, my computer has. Uh -huh. it's, it's got a it's, computer it's, COVID. It's, it's computer yes. COVID. So, <laughs> computer well, computer it's, variant. It's since computer it's not code. coming up and we're we just for time. It not long ago, me, but. Yeah, and I know, but let me read to you in her words. It's Woman of Letters, Vet Fanny McClendon's World War II unit receives long overdue recognition. Bring the screen back since we can't show it. I'll bring, I'll bring okay. up the pictures. Full, full screen, huh? So I'll bring up the pictures. Oh, okay. That video was fabulous, though. Yes, it is. And you just it showed is. it to me, right? A few minutes ago, wonder what happened. I know. Okay. Um, well, you're still sharing screen, so. Okay. Share so he can share his. Well, let me just read to you in her words. This is from an article that is in AARP this month. Can and you bring the screen back full screen? Oh, let's see. Yeah, just stop sharing. Stop sharing. Okay. Oh. There we yeah. go. Okay. Now, I stopped sharing, but this is still here. So, ah, there we okay. go. When I was in high school, my favorite subjects were history and geography. I just couldn't wait to see the places I had read about. That's why after I graduated, I enlisted in the army. My mother didn't think it was a good idea, but I had a mind of my own. The military was still segregated at that time, and I was assigned to the first all black, all female United States Army unit to be deployed overseas. We served in Europe during World War II as the 6 
Central Postal Directory Battalion. We had an important job to do. Our soldiers in Europe weren't getting their letters and packages delivered. There was a backlog of two to three years. And mail is the thread that keeps our service members connected to their families back home. Our battalion was determined to bring some cheer and hope to our soldiers. So when we first arrived in Birmingham, England, we worked in round the clock shifts seven days a week. And in only three months, we cleared up a backlog of around 17 million pieces of mail. That was two times faster than the army thought we could get it done. During the war, we also served in France. And after the war, I joined the Air Force. I was in line to become a squadron commander, but every time I got assigned, they would send me for more training. But that's all right. At training camp in Cheyenne, Wyoming, is where I met my late husband, Roy. And eventually, I did get that promotion. I became the first woman to lead in an all-male squadron in the Strategic Air Command. All told, I was in the service for 26 and a half years and never thought about getting any special honors. I'm amazed that I'll be receiving the Congressional Gold Medal for our service during the war. Every member of the 6888 will receive one. I'm only sorry that out of more than 800 battalion members, only a handful of us are still living to see this day. I'm grateful to have lived an amazing life. But what matters most is what all those letters represented, staying connected to the ones we hold dear. Retired Air Force Major Fanny Griffin McClendon is 101 years old and lives in Tucson, Arizona. Oh, that is so precious. That's wonderful. I don't know if you can see this. I'm glad you couldn't have shown her picture. But oh. Yeah. Can't see it. No, That's you can't it. see it. It has to go with over the yeah. Over the show, Turn but, your background. Maybe another time we'll we'll show the film. Yeah. And please. I'm sorry, all That's, you saw okay. was my head as I'm reading. <laughs> That's okay, girl. We have to do it the way we have to do it. Okay. So, so I'm gonna uh, just real quick. I'm gonna I'll share the screen with the the, the bell ringers. Um, oh, you found it. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I've had it. It's just that, uh, you know, it's that uh, computer COVID that's problem, causing oh, problems. That's okay, Barney. <laughs> so I don't know what this is. And you can, uh, you know, just quickly. You uh, this is Anna House. The picture I'm going to be sending <laughs> over to you is of Anna. She made truck tires in Akron, Ohio at age 15. She fibbed about her age. And when they found her out, uh, she was such a good worker, they somehow bent the rules. This picture I love because um, this was taken in the Freedom Museum in um, Nijmegen, Netherlands, again on the German border. Isn't that a great picture? And um, they have been just wonderful. They hosted a, our bringing in Rosie's two different times. And they've done a serious amount of work with us. That picture is of Charles, which you clearly see. Dorsey, <laughs> all of them are wonderful. So we treasure these pictures and that's so good of you, Martha. It's wonderful. So um, just know that- the We have some more in, pictures. There you are, my dear. What, thank you. Well, what happened to Richard? He had- Richard has a video and I can pop that on. You know, see that's- so the, yes. the email came, pictures and videos. And, yes, you know, and, uh, and so, I, um, I think I sent that over to you, did I not? You did, I have it, I just, you know, it's yes, here. Right. You know, real quick, you know, cause I think I showed Taylor's and- So yeah. what I'm saying folks is that with this group, you have been so welcoming of the project and you understand the basic concepts here. And we really do want to find a way to give uh, Operation Confidence, there he is. There's Richie. Uh, an award for Well, being this is for the Arosies. <laughs> okay. Yes. The bell is ringing for the Rosies. Uh -huh. Thank you. There you go. There's, there's our Richie. That's great. Thank you. 
Okay. So moving right along here. Where is Richard? <laughs> Did he leave? Appears to be. Oh, Richard. <laughs> no, he's not online. Yeah. No, he sure isn't. Maybe maybe he has some some technical difficulty because we got Lauren coming on now. Computer COVID. Yeah, That's exactly. <laughs> I'll call him while Lauren. Go ahead, Lauren. Take it away, girl. Well, uh, my name is Lauren Hammond, and my company is called Creative Charity Auctions. And I raise money for charities, nonprofits, schools, synagogues, churches, and any other organization looking to raise money. And I've been working with Operation Confidence for a few years, and I am so thrilled when we can raise money for them. We do silent live and online auctions and our inventory consists of sports, music, entertainment collectibles. We have art, jewelry, handbags, and lots of travel, both local, domestic, and international. And if Charles, you can show some of the items that we provide, um, we have the art and uh, we bring in what's most appropriate for each event that we do. So I always look to find out what the demographics and age range of the guests who are attending, if there's a theme, how much they're paying to attend. And we bring those items that are geared to the event. There are certain items that just tend to sell wherever we take them and we like to include those. And so some of the things that we also do since the pandemic, we not only do silent live, but we've been doing online auctions. And um, Connie, I will be talking to you to see about our doing one for you to see about raising money. Oh, yeah. And oh, excuse me, can you guys see these pictures? Yeah. Okay. And okay. yes, if you can scroll down, um, there's right now, I'm just seeing some of the art and um, we keep changing and adding items. And so we're constantly updating it. We have um, a link um, for our online auctions that we, constantly are updating it and adding more things and uh, our whole goal is to raise as much as we can and uh, we're looking forward to raising some money for operation confidence coming up soon and uh, if anybody is ever interested in um, buying items from our online store we then um, send it to we can send it to operation confidence um, whatever is sold and we give them a percentage so we're happy to do that. And uh, we're here to, to just help and raise money wherever we can. We do a lot for the military and we work with different military groups and uh, it's, um, they're well deserving of it. And we shouldn't see any military person on the streets or homeless. And so, um, so we need to get these homes built for them and uh, before you fly by, is that who is this with? Oh, that's Babe Ruth. And what is this here? A ticket? Um, that is a traffic ticket that he got in 1927 for speeding. Oh, <laughs> it's a huge game. seller at the events. Our first event we ever sold it was at a police event, actually. And um, so these are items that we do very well with at the auctions and, uh, and we keep adding more and more stuff. So this is a very small sampling of the things that we provide and we're adding more <laughs> items. Um, uh, next week are getting stuff from uh, new things from our framer and they'll be going on to our online auction as well as to our online store. So if anybody is interested in taking a look at the online store, if they're looking with the holidays coming up, um, they can go to our website, which is creativecharityauctions.com, and they can look at our store. And if there's anything they see or aren't interested in something and they don't see, they can call us and uh, we will help them. And uh, again, anything that they raise will go to um, a charity. And uh, Give your number out. It's the well, the website is creative charity auctions with an S dot com. And the office number is 818-840-1200. And or you can contact me by um, mobile phone. Um, my phone number is 818-425-2244. Say it again. Repeat. 
425-2244. And my office number is 818-840-1200. Within the next couple of weeks, we are going to have some of Richard Cook's um, photography on our site, on both our online auction and our online and on our website. Yeah, so, does he have, Richard, do you have anything to share today? Yeah, I have a few. Uh, if Charles has those, have those up, I, I'll share those. As okay. you can see behind me right now, that's one of my other art pieces, which was a photo that I took of a snake. And of course, then there's the logo of it, right? In that respect. I'm gonna share it like this now. Okay. So there's, there is the snake with the photo. I did some plumerias. I did a full moon. Tonight's gonna be a full moon too. So I'm gonna take a picture of that again tonight. And of course I have the black and white one that is uh, located when I was in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Then of course there, there's the rose right there. Uh, the, I have several roses and how they have transformed into art pieces. Uh, then I have the hibiscus with the plumerias, uh, the rose right there, uh, the seascape with the uh, area of the pier, the white rose, I mean, white hibiscus, I should say, uh, the plumerias. When I was in Alaska, that's the area of the bridge out there by uh, in the Alaska area. And of course, several other plumerias. And uh, you, you uh, got a lot on here. We're trying to run through time here, but yeah. I think but it's that, great. But yeah, that's you, about it. So you know, anyway. I want people to know that what makes your artwork so unique is that you had three or three strokes, and that you're visually impaired. And there's, there's and, I'm visually impaired, but I can still do photography. But I do photography a little bit differently. When right. I take the photo, I'm taking it, but I am seeing and guided by the Lord. And so I was able to take the picture still. And that's what I'm doing. Thank you. That's ex excellent. So on you, Wendy. You muted. So I will be brief. Uh, this is Suicide Awareness Month, in case you all are not familiar those who may not be familiar. This is Suicide Awareness Month. And it is a uh, month worth taking note of. Well, actually all year round, you should take note of it. I always suggest that you check in on family and friends. We think that everybody is doing well. I mean, I look at you all, you look happy and beautiful and perky, but on the inside, some, we silently suffer. So I suggest that you just check in from time to time on your loved ones, friends, co-workers, neighbors. Uh, oftentimes people don't want to do that because we don't want to be responsible for stepping up to the plate and being there for someone. That's a, a lot to do, but we need to be there for one another. I'm just going to give a few stats that I put up on the CDC's website, and those are in 2020. 12.2 million adults seriously thought about suicide. 3.2 made plans. 1.2 attempted suicide. In 2020, a total of 45,979 people died by suicide in uh, the US. And that equates to 11, one death every 11 minutes. I want to point out that it said 45,979 people die by suicide. That's what's recorded. Um, um, it is not, and, and when it says 12.2 seriously thought and 3.2 made a plan and 1.2 attempted, even with a death by suicide, because sometimes people put themselves in a position to be injured. They might run a red light and it looks like an accident, but it was intentional because they are desiring to save their life. And I just want to give a word of hope because that is what the bottom line of suicide is. People feel hopeless. When they have no hope, they have no reason to live. So I encourage each and every one of us 
and those that can hear and that are watching the show to take the time out to just talk to people and encourage people. And you never know that just that one conversation you have with a stranger in the grocery store or in your neighborhood, or that smile might be the thing that brings someone back and keeps them from taking their lives. We never know, but a little kindness, a little compassion goes a long way. And I just want us to know that. And yes, we are brothers and sisters keeper. That's so needed what you just shared with us. You know, you never know who's really suffering. And you know what, it's been a, a huge amount of people due to, due to COVID and having to be inside all the time and can't mm -hmm. get out and be a part of society. The, the, a lot of people just really, really lost it. So I yeah. really thank yeah. you for what you share with us. You're, you're welcome. And I'm just going to say this. The scariest thing is that the suicide, suicide is affecting children People younger and younger and younger. We can't have seven, eight, nine-year-olds taking their lives. Oh, God. Uh, the, the second leading age group that, uh, that dies by suicide is 25 and 34. The mm -hmm. third leading age group is 15 and 24. That is too young. Our young people are leaving here, and we need to step in and be the mentors and the sounding boards and just be present with people. And you know what, last week before last, I believe it was Martha had a segment about children of uh, our veterans, how they're suffering, you yeah. know, and how, you know, a lot of them are borderlines of, you know, suicide. So, you know, I mean, it's just sad what we're hearing. Don't you agree, Martha, that wasn't that a great piece that you shared? Yes. And, you know, like I said, I think um, it's just, it's the continued pressure that children, their families, you know, our veterans are feeling um, as we see this wealth gap kind of increase. So as people that were once kind of making it work in the middle class really are struggling, you know, and post pandemic trying to figure out what they're going to do to survive with right. less income and more challenges in it. And it does, it affects the whole family unit but hope is it and then it's whatever we can do um like we heard dr Childress say um take that phone call you know reach out see how people are doing you'd be surprised at how one person's voice could be you know all the hope that they need to you know That's push right. through Everybody. another day right. you know when we were talking about the arts the arts absolutely help and being able to put together a vision board and children having an opportunity along with their parents to listen to music and to learn to play a musical instrument. Mm -hmm. Music is a massive healer yeah, uh, right, for yeah. a, a lot of reasons, but I, I, everything that was, was said today, the arts have something to do with it. And I'll piggyback on role. that and, and I'll piggyback on that and tell you exactly, because I, I have a songwriting class that I do and it's uh, through our wellness center at Rancho Los Amigos, which, you know, where most of the people there are, are everyone's there for some sort of rehab, where has a disability of some sort. And music is healing. You know, you can write mm -hmm. your feelings in song as opposed to, uh, you know, so, you know, if you can do that and express yourself, mm -hmm. then, you know, there's, there's, there's an avenue for that as opposed to, you know, sometimes hopefully not going to take their lives and, you know, and I've heard people who tell me the stories that, you know, because of this music, it helped me in my life, you know, and there was difficult times. So, you know, you got to move on, Chuck. Um, I would say one last thing, because Martha touched on it with the different therapies and instead of just being medicated, because medication doesn't solve it. It no. just dulls it or, or suppresses it. Oh, creates so a whole nother problem. Mask. It, it, yes, <laughs> it mask it or creates a whole nother problem. But yeah. those different mm -hmm. forms of therapy and the human co human connectedness, the different forms of therapy makes a big difference. Now, last thing I'm going to say, caveat, I never say prevent suicide because if the person is just determined he or she is going to, then you end up feeling guilty that you were not able to stop it. Mm -hmm. But I 
strongly advocate for intervention. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to do our best to come alongside that person and try and help them and keep them here instead of going the other way. Right. That's deep. Thank you so much. That was so important, so needed. You're welcome. Okay, it's on you, my baby girl, my baby girl. <laughs> In honor of African-American women who impacted the world, we give the honor to just a few women with a disability, this segment, um, who have had a powerful impact in society. These are just a few who have left a legacy of bridge building, um, radical self-love, and advocacy we all strive for. There's Barbara Jordan. She became the first African-American to serve in the Texas Senate in 1967. And in, seven, in 1973, she became the first African-American woman from a Southern state to serve in Congress. She was also the first black woman to give the keynote address at, um, at a Democratic National Convention. She has multiple school roles. She worked for voting rights and minimum wage laws and was considered a leader in the civil rights movement. There's Sylvia Walker. She was director of the Center for Disability and Socioeconomic Policy Studies at the Howard University Research and Training Center. She served as vice chair of the president's committee on the employment of people with disabilities. She was a champion for disability rights and her research helped lead the Americans with Disability Act. There's Jazzy Collins. She was a powerful San Francisco Black transgender activist who fought for the rights of seniors, people with disabilities, LGBT, and people with people of color. She served on San Francisco's first LGBT aging policy task force and was active with our very own senior and disability action and previously senior action network. Lastly, there's Lois Curtis, a Black artist and activist with a mental health disability and intellectual developmental disability. During her childhood and early adulthood, she lived in state-run institutions and her requests to live in the community were repeatedly, were repeatedly denied. She sued the state of Georgia and her case went to the Supreme Court. In the now famous Elsie versus Olmstead decision, the court declared that Curtis and other people with disabilities have a right to live in the community and to be provided adequate support. The court said, the unnecessary institu institutionalization is a form of segregation and is illegal under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Curtis now lives within her community. Okay, take it away, Martha. All right. The Disabled Latina on a Mission to Become a Counselor for Military Vets. Beatriz Macia had a dream. The Cuban-born Latina, better known as Bet to her amigas, is on a mission to raise tuition so she can go from being disabled with late-stage Lyme disease to becoming a counselor to military men, women, and their families, including treating post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and others who suffer from Lyme disease. Bet is passionate about becoming a great counselor. It is also a career she can do either part-time or full-time as her health allows. She has been accepted to an online master's degree program she can do even when she becomes weak and needs to take a break and lie down. Bet has faced many challenges in her life. She left a communist community where she, when she was five and came to the U.S., she is a divorced mother with four children who lost her second oldest son to asthma, and she was ill for too long without understanding what the heck was going on. She had spent months and years in bed, very weak and de debilitated. Finally, her Lyme, disease, her Lyme disease illness is doing better than it has in a long time, although she is not cured. Bet chalks up being organized and persevering in her strategy to succeed in earning her master's degree. Bet was just accepted into the master's of arts degree program in psychology with specialization in military psychology at Adler University. Adler is the oldest university to have a program geared towards military psychology, which includes counseling for PTSD. Bet is the daughter of a US Army veteran and has seen firsthand how devastating and incapacitating PTSD 
and related problems can be to active duty, retired, and veteran military men and women and their families. Bet disbelieves her experiences and going through hard times and learning how to persevere can help others. She knows perseverance. She's earned her bachelor's degree the same year her oldest child graduated from high school. Before being disabled, Bet was a volunteer at a telephone crisis hotline and worked on or volunteered in emergency management. She worked all of the 2004-2005 Florida hurricanes, as well as working in Mississippi for six weeks for Hurricane Katrina and Rita. She feels that feeling such devastation and loss really puts things into perspective. And so this was a really good uh, story. Thank you, Connie, for highlighting, uh, you know, um, a disabled women veteran. Um, but it's it also shows kind of the bigger picture of how the beautiful thing in life is that even though you have your own, you know, stuff going on, um, not to, you know, diminish her health problem in any way, but finding the strength and courage on the contrary to help others when you've got your own, you know, health conditions that you're dealing with um, is something that I think needs to be highlighted about this great individual. And, you know, it's the beauty that you kind of feel this magic of the, of the universe that kind of comes into your life to give you again, that strength um, to deal with what you're dealing with when you put the needs of, of others ahead. So just wanted to right. say that kind of a beautiful, beautiful article that I'm glad wanted to share. I thought it was very important. So you chose Barney. <laughs> All right. Oh, you know, Andy. Okay. <laughs> so it's hot news. Okay. Hot. 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 You know, it's like the sun with uh, uh, hot sauce on it. It's hot and spicy. Today's hot news is about influential Black men with a disability to follow. We're going to talk about first Antoine Tolliver. After acquiring a spinal cord injury, Antoine founded the clothing company Freedom is Fly, which is an affordable street style brand. Antoine says adjusting to life in a wheelchair took a toll on him. He didn't feel like himself. He said, I felt uncomfortable in my own skin. Every now and then I would get dressed and go out with family and friends. That was, that was the only time I felt alive. It made sense because when you look good, you feel good. That is the reason I created the brand Freedom is Fly. I just want to let people in similar situations know that it's okay not to be like everyone else. It's okay not to follow trends. It's okay to be comfortable in your own uniqueness. Antoine is also represented by ZBD Management, a model and talent agency working with people with disabilities and visible differences. Follow Antoine on Facebook and Instagram. Then we talk about Leon Ford. Leon is the author of Untold. Testimony and Guide to Overcoming Adversity. He shares his experience of surviving five shots from a Pittsburgh police officer that left him paralyzed. It also details the steps he took to overcome the trauma associated with this painful experience. He recently joined President Obama for a conversation about mental health and wellness in a racism pandemic and also ran for Pittsburgh City Council in 2019. His next name is Faranmi Okalami. I got, hope I got that right, you know, and if I didn't, for around me, forgive me. Dr. Okalami <laughs> earned his master's degree from the University of Michigan and studied into orthopedic surgery at Yale, where he acquired a spinal cord injury during his third year. He is currently an assistant professor of family medicine and physical medicine and rehab at the University of Michigan. He also, he is also the director of adaptive sports, which provide access to physical fitness and sports for people with disabilities. Now we have Jesse Chin. Jesse is a sit down comedian who has performed at comedy clubs in New York City. He credits the power of, of laughter for his positive outlook on life. He is an ambassador for the See Us campaign for the Christopher and Dana Reeves Foundation, which highlights individuals with spinal cord injuries. Jesse is also a model for the brand Tommy Hilfiger, Tommy Hilfiger and appeared on the runway of Dreams Fashion Show wearing the clothes. Now, the last thing that I have to show you is a little funny clip. <laughs> 
you know, just kind of good information though that y'all. It is, you know, this is good stuff, you know, that you know, there and we and this is just a, a sprinkling of it, you know. There's a whole lot of people that we can follow and talk about. You know, if we start talking about everybody, then we'd be here, you know, for a couple of years. So, you know, you know, like is the show going in this year? <laughs> you know, so so uh, uh, ne next up, I'm going to um, just show you a, a quick clip. Uh, we winding down now. Winding this it down. Funny yes. clip. You know, and then this one is, uh, you know, it don't don't, uh, you know, this is a little under under unexpected, uh, uh, you know, thing here. Let's see. Okay, so now you don't want to play for okay right here let's try it here ain't no use in struggling because you ain't getting away i ain't got to try to get away steve here now uh-huh what the hell steve gonna do you go see what yourself was uh-huh what's that steve i heard so much about you Ooh. guys get back to the truck everybody back to the truck oh i clearly underestimated steve let me go get my pistol stay right there steve i'll be right back ain't <laughs> <laughs> i got to try to get away steve here now uh-huh what the hell steve Oh, he's so funny. <laughs> it's always good to end with some humor. Taylor, take it away. We're closing out now. Before Miss Connie closes the show, I would like to remind our viewers and listeners about our amazing advertisement rate. We have 20 and 30 second advertisement slots available. Please email info at operationconfidence.org. Again, info at operationconfidence.org. For more information and visit Operation Confidence's website at www dot operationconfidence.org and also go to our research page for some amazing resources. I would also like to inform our viewers and listeners about Amazon Smile. When making your next purchase on Amazon, please go to Amazon Smile and type in Operation Confidence in the Choose Your Organization donation box. Amazon will make a small donation to Operation Confidence. And to get involved in Operation Confidence Tiny Houses Project, visit our website and send us a message on how you would like to be involved. Okay, so to our, okay, to our viewers, we would like to inform you about Operation Confidence's Positive Redirection Team, a group of male and female veterans who are mentors, having overcome similar challenges and situations transitioning back into mainstream society. To be connected or become a team member, email us at info at operationconfidence.org. Again, the email info at operationconfidence.org. And I'm also excited to inform our viewers about Operation Confidence's Combat Boots and Lace Women Veterans Mentoring and Creative Arts Program. So as I kind of talked about earlier, you know, trying to find some, um, you know, connection to a possible foundation or an outside group to kind of sponsor some of the events and activities. Um, so we're moving in the right direction. And if anyone is interested or to get more information about how to get involved, please email me at Martha, M-A-R-T-H-A at operationconfidence.org. All right. Thank you. And as always, we want to remind our viewers that our goal for our show is to raise awareness about Operation Confidence's mission which is to provide stable housing to our veterans, especially those with a disability, and offer a wide range of supportive services. So to get involved with our grassroots efforts, please send us an email to info at operationconfidence.org. Again, that's info at operationconfidence.org. And don't forget to visit our website. I also want to tell you, please don't forget to subscribe to uh, American Invisible Heroes on our YouTube channel. We are so, so proud to say we joined in on in June, on actually on June 4th, 2021, and to date we have 60,824 viewers. That ain't bad for just a small little organization that's just got going here. And then last but not least, uh, we want to announced that the American Invisible Heroes, our YouTube channel will be, is now being showed as of last Saturday on the Block 105 Satellite, satellite Radio. It's an hour show, which I'm gonna at least try to see if we can extend it longer. And it's every Saturday from three to four Pacific Standard Time. 
So thank you so much for tuning in today. And we want to thank our listeners. We want to thank our uh, guests, of course, our co-hosts. You guys are just ph phenomenal. And we're so excited. We'll be back next week. Thank you so much for being here today. Goodbye. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Ending video, and we'll see you next week. No. Okay, yeah. for sure. <laughs> bye, bye.